coming up this week on the Course of Life podcast. Some highlight moments from the QBE shootout, wrapping up the calendar year in golf with a fitting champion to wrap it up. Plus, it is a Tiger Woods golf week in the middle of the holiday season. It's been a while since I said that, but we're breaking it all down for the PNC this weekend. We're also tuned into a brand new release in theaters and everything else going on in the world outside of sports. This week's guest, a former Holy Moly contestant who I had a great time with out in Los Angeles. He's a jack of all trades in Hollywood and a hilarious guest with some funny stories from his career. Plus, college football bowl season has begun. We break down the silliest bowl games and we always end with food. All of it brought to you by our friends at Club Dr. Golf. Mike, good news from the golf course this past weekend, which I didn't even mention to you. Yeah. Round of the year material at Avery Ranch for me. Oh, wow. Four over par 76, but I had two birdies and should have been more. I was playing great. Got a lot of good opportunities out there, and I was striking it well. The irons were nice and pure, and I think it's a little bit in part to Club Doctor Golf and the cleaning solution because the, sure. the grooves were nice and clean. Yeah, I was I was spinning wedges, Mike. You know, Ooh. seven eight irons, stopping on a dime. I'm like, who who is this guy? I, I didn't know who the guy was, but it was fun to see that performance. I owe a little bit of the credit to Club Doctor Golf and their cleaning solution. Uh, it clips on your golf bag, and it's a really easy solution. It's just spray, spray, and swipe to keep your clubs clean on the course. You can get the cleaning solution or the polishing solution or two-for-one kit. It's a great holiday gift for any golfer in your life as well. Bring your clubs back to life and restore your club's original shine with Club Doctor. Either the solution or the polish, both quick, portable solutions you need on the golf course. Also, Amazon's choice for golf club polish as well. So if that's not enough of a kudos, then this is right here. Go to clubdoctorgolf.com and use code COL for 15% off any purchase. That's clubdoctorgolf.com, promo code COL for 15% off your club doctor today. and welcome to Course of Life, part of the Morning Read Podcast Network. We are proud to be presented by our friends at Desert Fox Golf and Tosi Snacks and Club Doctor Golf. I'm Michael, he's Alex. And Alex, it was another week of Tiger Woods and whatnot going on. We'll get to that in a moment. But first, let's talk about the QBE shootout in Naples, Florida. Two-man teams, uh, or it's really two-person teams, because it wasn't all men playing in the tournament. Yeah, but it was in there too. Our favorite golfer my favorite golfer on tour who needs to be winning more and i'm going to ask it again in a little bit well the question i always ask every week but kevin na walking in putts and gets the win with jason kokrak here's the question kevin na is this his year is he going to win a major Right. I know it's time. And then this is every where time. I tell you, yeah, man, he's going to go off at a hundred or 150 to one. And you know, I'm putting yeah. a dollar on him every time. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know if it's coming at Augusta, but maybe one of the other three mm-hmm. later this year, we'll, we'll, we'll keep him in the back pocket just like we always do, but, but a very fitting end for the, for the last formal tournament with, with all the pros in action at the QB shootout, uh, two person teams. It was a small field, fun action in Naples though. Birdies galore. And yeah, Kevin, not walking in putts a tale as old as time. For those who don't know Kevin Na to this point, he, he is world famous because the moment he hits a putt, he just has that unbelievable intuition sometimes to know exactly the moment when a putt's going in. And, and he will almost beat the golf ball to the hole, Mike. And he did it a couple times on Sunday. And he was a crucial part to the victory for, for the Na Kokrak team uh, getting the win. It was always impressive to see because, you know, I just I wish I had that confidence in my putting the way he does. Yeah, you know, there's nothing like hitting the putt. And as your putter is in your backswing, you know that ball's going to go in. It is that kind of confidence that makes Kevin nod. Just It's cocky as hell, but it's just so great to see. And he, he has a good time doing it. And I, I think he he's very aware of it. Um, but they, Kevin Na and Kokrak played great birding 12 of their last 13 Sunday. They were down, they were out off three shots because of course we had, uh, Mark Leishman and Jason Day leading all week. And this looked like it was their tournament yeah. until it got to Sunday and they just could not do it. 
Um, Them and uh, so, the horse, yeah, Billy Horschel, Sam Burns team, who I mentioned on mm-hmm. last week's episode, they were flirting yep. with the lead at the end too. Uh, but clutch birdies when they needed it. Kokrak hit like a five or six footer, just absolute balls when he needed a clutch putt to seal the W. And the interesting thing I saw, Kevin Na, kind of behind the scenes, had been going through a little bit of, uh, of stuff in his personal life. He had unfortunately had a loss of a couple of friends in his life, and he got very emotional after the win. It's funny, you know, you see these guys get to the top and win a tournament and they have an amazing week and, and they're reflecting on a lot of people who, who may not be around to see that victory and, and not got surprisingly emotional you know for this being a kind of december silly season event uh but it meant a lot to him that performance uh, in that moment so it was a cool moment to see to kind of put, put a little bit of a bow on the 2021 golf calendar it was indeed but wait there's more there is this mm-hmm. unbelievable I'm, I'm, I'm yeah like i said I'm, I'm usually quite literally wrapping the presents and I'm, I'm done thinking about the golf but we're heading like straight into christmas week with tiger woods action like what mm-hmm. planet are we on it's crazy it's going to be the pnc championship we said it last week we kind of called it without calling it we thought tiger was going to play this yeah. week and of course he is. He's going to play. He's going to have a cart. Uh, really, it doesn't matter. Charlie's going to be the one doing everything on the course. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens there. Uh, do we think that this is going to be the Thomases repeating again? I, I don't know. Really, this tournament is always a, a, a toss up. You never know what's going to happen here. It is actually. And yeah, like for people who are wondering, you, you might think if you don't watch a lot of golf, oh, well, Tiger Woods and his son obviously win the father son championship. No, they didn't. They finished in seventh mm-hmm. last year. Yep. So so it's it's a little tricky. You know, remember when you get, you know, Justin Thomas and his dad who's a scratch golfer in his own right on, on a two man team, like they can make a lot of birdies too. So uh these these father son tournaments are pretty competitive w- with the fields that are out there. So Charlie's definitely probably hit in longer than the last time we saw him play a year ago. I know he's won more junior tournaments this year, and Tiger was watching him do some of those. Uh so yeah, the moral of the story is Tiger Woods is probably not gonna have to hit driver on I'd say half the holes he normally would he'll he'll just pick the tee up and won't even tee off half the time and the other time he'll give it a go but i think we're gonna see like 70 percent of tiger woods back in action like this is a true you know father son hit and giggle event i don't think he's gonna be going after any aggressive shots angles or lies there's gonna be a lot of fairway wedges chips and putts not too much bunker play needed I think this is kind of the exact recipe for Tiger to just dip one toe back into the water competitively here. The question is, how much of next week's podcast are we going to be dedicating to breaking down Tiger Woods' performance and how likely it is that he's going to win at Augusta? (laughs) Yes. Yes, we're all going to freak out on the internet in the next few weeks uh, because of anything that Tiger does in the father-son when when he's playing alongside his kid in December on a flat golf course in Florida in 80-degree weather. Uh, So it will be overreaction city in the weeks to come. I'm going to try and stay clear of that. Again, this is quite literally the uh, the exhibition of all exhibitions he, like i said last week he he's doing this because we all know what happened charlie was dragging his leg saying dad you're healthy enough i've seen you swing we're playing the father son i love this tournament and you know dad can't turn down son in that moment it's so it's that's why we got tiger out here but regardless it, i what i will appreciate which i could always get behind is i love the over aggressive fanfare that we're gonna see this week we're gonna have like triple mm-hmm. cameras at the father son <laughs> there's gonna be all sorts of galleries there there that have never been there before uh so the fanfare in and of itself will make for a fun week and it's going to be on uh, nbc all weekend as well that's right it wasn't going to be on nbc but it is now because tiger woods is back so gee they just happened to make room in the schedule for it to be on nbc on sunday so Mm -hmm. right yeah that's not all right so yeah i I don't know what this really all all says for the future here it'll be good to 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 see him out there i don't really i was i was kind of pondering and wanted to bring up you know are we going to get any future announcements announcement from tiger here at the end of this weekend no, i know people are no. gonna they're gonna re-ask that question and say you know when do you think your 2022 debut is i don't think he's gonna say like a tory pines late gene i know people have hinted that like he's gonna say he's gonna commit to tory pines this week in late january and now uh, i think it's still a little too early for that i think he's gonna hold it close to his chest and we're gonna look for that announcement maybe after the holidays uh so we'll, we'll see what what happens with tiger's play this week but good good to see just bottom line from human being to human being good to see tiger back out on the golf course again it is indeed i will say i'll add my my five cents here that i don't think he would come back in tory pines i could see him coming back at bay hill before coming to augusta 
Mm, that is a possibility. And I'm, you know, I'm, you know, mm-hmm. I'm begging for that match play, that match play a couple weeks before the Masters, too, right? Hey, the yeah. match play, Tiger. You never have to play 18 holes if you don't it's want true. to. Okay. It's true. There you go. There you that's, go. that's easy on the leg. So just a thought, but we'll see good. what Tiger's schedule holds from here. Let's switch over to Tuned In, where we get into what we're tuning into outside the world of sports. I'm going to continue my video game theme that I started oh, last oh, week. Boy. So More this video week. Games. This is this yep. is like official video game playing season, I would say. It you is. know, it's it like is. it's about time when you open you get the gifts for the holidays. Mm-hmm. We've got these days off. You've got time during the holidays. You you have permission to like play hours and hours on end of a game this time of year. And that, that goes for everyone at home listening to. It's really true. And and also uh my wife's semester has ended, so she's done teaching and grading, so she needs something to do. So she is playing Super Mario Party Superstar. Uh, and just reminiscing on all the hours that she spent as a child playing Super Mario Party. Mm. Me being a child who lived in a in a cage, never got to go out into the world, uh, have never played this before. And yet, while she kept talking smack about how much she was going to beat me, I have beaten her every time we've oh, played. Oh, wow. Okay, so you, you've delivered the, the first shot here in the, in the rivalry. Good. I good mean, look, work. the facts <laughs> don't lie. <laughs> if I'm winning, I'm winning. I'm checking back on the record in a few weeks to see if that changed. You know your wife's like practicing in the middle of the night now. You know, to, to, to it's weird because I, I also... I, I beat her very easily. I hate to say it in uh, when we play Mario Kart. <laughs> oh, and boy. she doesn't understand why we don't. When we played on the Wii and the Wii U, I, I always got my butt kicked. But now on the Switch, I just own her in Mario Kart. It's just like nonstop. We have a butt, I'm a in butt first, Mario she's in last. In yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty horrible <laughs> considering that I've only been playing video games since like college. So. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm Mario <laughs> through and through. I was banging out Mario Golf and Super Smash Brothers back in the day. Yeah. I went to Mario Kart and Party. I've gone through the whole gamut on those games. I'm sure that is a good one indeed. Sounds like fun. Uh, my tuned in is is me hitting theaters. I uh, caught a new Ooh. release this past weekend. Um, was definitely interested in West Side Story because oh, yeah. I had a few friends of mine in high school that did this as a high school musical. I remember seeing yep. it a couple of times. I was like, you know what? This, this could be good. I'm, I'm going to give this a go. So I went and saw the new West Side Story movie. I was pretty impressed. I'm not going to lie. You know me. I'm like one of the last guys to go see a movie like this in this genre subset. But I was thoroughly entertained. Uh, a lot of the music and the numbers brought me back. Uh, didn't get like the most glamorous reviews from everyone out the box um, from what you're reading online. But I'll tell you, if you're an original fan of the play or you have any allegiance towards the play itself, it's definitely a good watch. And I'd encourage you to go see it. I mean, it is a classic, classic story of uh, that, that just and everyone and needs a, to and watch. A, tra- and a tragedy as well, too. My, mm. my wife hadn't really officially seen West Side Story. <laughs> Well, geez, and, she's she's read <laughs> Romeo and Juliet, hasn't she? Right. I mean, she, <laughs> she knows that. And, I'm, and the end came. And she's like, oh, that was that was tragic. And I'm like, yep, yeah. that's that's the end of the movie right there. This there is, it is. This is uh, <laughs> spoiler alert. Like West Side Story is Romeo and Juliet. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good watch. Good to be back in the theater as well, too. Full bucket of popcorn on hand. Gigantic sodas were had. And uh, yeah, West Side Story. Two thumbs up here. All right, let's get into this week's guest. Alex, you got to meet this week's guest when you were out in L.A. a few weeks ago at the Mammoth Media Institute Open, hosted by our good friend Tanner Beard. And just like Tanner, Evan Michael is also a former Holy Moly contestant who went viral for face planting on national television. Yes, that's right. Well, what what a great memory, right? Nothing like being a meme, you know? That that's when you really made it in, in 2021, Mike. It is when when you just become a meme. And that's what this week's guest has become, uh but he's a lot more than that. Uh actor, host that has an amazing experience in Hollywood and a very interesting live production experience uh for those kids parents, mothers, fathers out there who know anything about Peppa Pig, you'll definitely want to tune into this conversation. A very funny one with Evan Michael. We'll get into that in just a moment. But first, as always, this interview is brought to you by Desert Fox Golf, our friends of the show and the makers of the Phone Caddy. The Phone Caddy lets you strap your phone right onto the side of your golf cart so it's easy to view and use all day long. You don't have to fumble around in the dark spaces of your cart, drop it on the seat or drop it on the grass as you drive away. The phone caddy will keep you locked in safely so you can stay locked into your round. And we might be, depending on when you're listening to us, just missing 
Christmas shipping, but there's still Canadian Boxing Day. There's oh, still well put, New yeah. Year's Day. There's still Valentine's Day for your golf lover. There's still um, uh, Easter. We're getting kind of far out there now, but you know, I was wondering how can, long this list could go. But this is an impressive array of options for gift giving. Uh, I like it. Passover. Pa- there's Passover around the same time as Easter as usual. There is. Uh, I, I'm going to keep going now. So, there's, so there's just because you missed this holiday, does it does it yeah. mean that you can't and, miss others? You know, it's and possible. you can always do it just because you love playing with someone and you want to get them this, or you love that person who plays in your life and you want to get them someone something special like this. And you can get it in any color you want, practically. They got great ranges of colors, bright orange, black on black, or even their patriotic lines. So you can get it for the uh, the veteran, the active duty troop, the, the police officer, the firefighter in your life and show them how much you love them and that they can shout uh, what they do while they're on the golf course. It's really pretty awesome. And because you're listening to us, you can save 10%. You just need to use the promo code course of life when you go to their website, desertfoxgolf.com. So you can get a phone caddy for anyone in your life for any occasion and use that promo code course of life to save 10%. Again, that's promo code course of life at desertfoxgolf.com. Next up on the tee out in sunny California, he is an Emmy winner in his own right, covered lots of corners in the entertainment industry, including an appearance on my favorite guilty pleasure, Holy Moly. It's Evan Michael joining us on the course of life. Evan, how are things out there in California today? Four. They're doing great. The forecast is perfect for golf and podcasts. Yes, exactly. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, I want to touch quickly on how you and I originally met before we connected here. Uh, we got a chance to both be at the Mammoth Media Institute Open, hosted by Tanner Beard, uh, another full, a former holy moly re- legend in his own right, of course. Uh, but tell me about your, your highlight of that day and connecting and, and meeting on the red carpet. Well, obviously, besides us, you know, getting to do our red carpet interview and have that amazing tee shot filmed for all of posterity to, to learn from. Uh, that was probably no exaggeration. And again, you know, we love golf and, and we love entertainment and we love giving back to good causes. So I have done scrambles ever since I've been allowed to do them. Right. So yeah. we're talking hundreds and hundreds of scrambles over, you know, 25 plus years that, experience is on the Mount Rushmore of golf tournaments that I played in. Uh, It was just a class act all the way around, tons of fun. And obviously that golf course is, it reminds me of Holy Moly. DeBell has some Holy Moly holes uh, (laughs) just in their shape and design. So the the whole setup was uh, from tee to green, uh, memorable, fun, and, and well worth it. Yeah, it was neat to connect with you out there. And it was funny to hear you and Tanner talk, kind of talk about the the holy moly bond you share as well, too. It's interesting. I'm always fascinated with the amazing job of that casting team. They bring together a, a wonderful fraternity of personalities is the way I'll put it. Uh, but talk to me about kind of your, your experience being on the show and everything that's kind of come from being on the show and that, that network thereafter. Yeah, no, thanks for asking. And it was great to basically have like a holy moly reunion. At, yeah. the, at the at the mammoth uh, event, uh, that was that was really special for me too. So I saw a listing years ago, right for a a golf show that was going to be like Wipeout meets Putt Putt, and it didn't have a name at that time. And they were looking for people who not only love golf but but wouldn't mind you know going through obstacles, just doing something crazy. So. I didn't submit as a as a player. I submitted to be a host because that's my background and they were looking for talent across the board. And then I found out that it was not just going to be some little small time show that they had, you know, they had major stars attached to this, Steph Curry, Rob Riggle, Joe Tessitore. Uh so I'm like, okay, well, I know I'm out of it as a host, but maybe they'll let me be a, a contestant. And I didn't hear it from them at all. Alex, I'm I'm like ghosted. And then on the night before my wedding, October 19th, 2018, I get an email that says, Evan, we're so sorry. We want you on the show. We're, we're going to fast track you. We need you to send us an audition tape by tonight. 
And I respond back and I go, that might be tough. I'm getting married tomorrow. And they go, what? And so I didn't tell my wife. I snuck down. God bless this hotel. It actually had a putting green in Michigan. And I went down to the putting green and I filmed all these challenges. I made a putt with an umbrella. I'm putting under wedding chairs. I'm trying to knock a ball onto the tea saucer plate. And I get it done. And I send it in. And then I make it to the rehearsal dinner. And then they booked me uh, as soon as I got back from my honeymoon. I love that. I think the putting green in Michigan might be the biggest surprise in that entire story. (laughs) Shout out to you for putting the the video together as fast as you did. Right. Like uh, that's probably one of my proudest accomplishments. Uh, (laughs) uh, If uh, if I'm joking about, you know, the entertainment industry and self tapes is getting something together the day before my wedding and still having it work. One thing I really do appreciate, which we got to talk about when you met, is obviously there was the slip and putt viral moment that happened on your appearance on the episode, but you took it very well the entire time. Um, Tell me where that gets recirculated, the most random times you've had that brought up since your appearance on the show. Right. Yeah. So I get on the show. I don't know what holes I'm going to be playing. I don't know who I'm going to be playing against, but I'm just absolutely in awe at, at truly the scale of this thing. And, and I don't care win or lose, just being there for me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm tickled pink. I'm on, I'm on a cloud that is way above nine, probably for golf, a cloud 18. And then I see that I'm doing this slip and putt hole and I go, oh no, I'm already a klutz. I, I don't need uh, anything extra on an uphill incline to slip on. I will just fall naturally, but then they're hosing this thing down and I see it and I go, well, if I'm going to fall, I just, I got to I just got to own it and have fun with it. I didn't think I would fall on my, literally on my face. That That's not even, people say, oh, you fell on your face. That's the expression. No, I literally did. Face first. Face first. But yeah. in the air, it becomes a meme that I still get texted at. Anytime somebody is watching a Boston sports game, all my friends in mass, somebody gets tackled or hit, it gets dropped. I get a text message and it's just that gift. <laughs> going around savage you know, it's just it is it's savage and and now that my parents like know how mm-hmm. to use a a phone an iphone they're figuring out how this works and i'm like oh no this is the worst like i don't mind if it's coming from my friends but now i got this that generation the boomers are laying the boom down on me now you gotta be kidding me this is, yeah, it's, this is not, not fair when even the olds are getting after you too. That's, that's all. That's when you know you've really made it, huh? <laughs> Good stuff. That was, that was a phenomenal moment indeed. Uh, I'll, I'll now give you a moment though, however, to wax poetic on your actual golf game. I know you just discussed before we hopped on. It's, it's been unfortunately a few weeks since you've gotten out there. You love to play as much as you can. I got the pleasure of seeing your first tee shot, which was pretty well in your own right. How's the game right now? And, and what are you enjoying most about being out on the course? Yeah, thanks for asking. Uh, I'm trying to get back. I don't know if I'll ever be scratch again. I was I was a pretty solid golfer uh, in high school and in college. Um, I didn't. I played in high school. I didn't play in college. Then I played in grad school, uh, which uh, which was weird but fun at the same time. And I you know I won a couple of tournaments. I had a couple of fun trophies my way, some scholarship money, but I was never at a at an elite level, but a good level, right? Which is a great mm-hmm. level to be at. And then I didn't play for like a decade. And and I got back out on the course out here in California and I, and I was shooting in the mid eighties and, and I felt like, oh my goodness, is this going to be, you know, what it's like? Am I ever going to be able to get back to my glory days? And I'm working my way back. I went from 12 handicap, got it down to nine. And now I'm hovering around a six or a seven going back and forth. And, and it just, it just feels good to even if I'm only playing once a month to to get out there and and if I need to to go low it, and as you know right it just depends on who you're playing with if I'm playing with a bunch of fun guys who are not caring I'll shoot 85 and and whatever but if I'm like playing competitive and you got stakes on the line I might want to go like uh, you know 74 75 and, and kind of shut people up I like that. We have about the same handicaps. We'll have to get a match in the future, but uh, I appreciate the perspective and it was good to to see you out there indeed. So we obviously know you from Holy Moly, but the the other thing that I need to bring up, which was an amazing highlight in your career was, let, let me just lead with the idea that you went on tour for over two years. So I'm I'm just going to leave that statement out in the ether and then I'll let people's imagination run wild for a while. First off, what was it like being on tour for that long? And that sounds like an inexplicable amount of time and tell everyone why that was. Yeah. So when 
would people would hear that like, oh, Evan, you were on tour. One half of the camp would thank me for my service. And then I would have to awkwardly say, oh, I, uh, I'm not on that type of tour. Right. But, yes. But, correct. but I, but I'm with you. Let's, let's thank our, our service members. You know, I, I'm with you on that one. So I explain I'm not on that type of tour. And then they go, Oh, are you like an athlete? Like, you know, I know you're a golfer. Did you play at some level of that tour? And I'm like, Nope, not that one either. And so then they come around and go, Oh, you're a musician. Yep. I got it's gotta be it. Who do you play with? Like what instrument do you play? And then I have to let them down again. So three, three letdowns to figure out what tour I'm on. But, I'll tell you, it felt like I was a rock star. It felt like I was an athlete. It, it, all of that experience is the same, which once we deliver the actual punchline here, will we'll, we'll truly people will be, you know, they'll be like, what are you talking about? There's no way you can do what you did and have it be the same as, you know, what Steven Tyler did on Aerosmith. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, it is, because we were in Steven Tyler's bus. We had his bus. They gave us Aerosmith's butts after Aerosmith got done. So we found like pics and pamphlets in the back of the tour bus from Aerosmith. Yeah, the guy who was doing morning show television and theater, you ended up oiking through an audition that probably changed your career. And you were on tour with the Peppa Pig live kid show for two plus years. Um, I- I'm so curious about what that was, that experience is like, but I'd love for you to take us a little bit behind the scenes on how that works and actually being part of a show like that before we get to the enormity of it. I'm yeah. very curious. Explain to everyone what's going on inside the suit of your character when you're physically doing that live live kids show on stage and playing those characters. Right. So, so yeah, the Peppa Pig cartoon brought to life on stage in a live musical for the first time we did the first ever uh, North American and Canadian tour. And because those characters were larger than life, they made the costumes larger than life because they wanted the little kids to see them as big and, and grand as they were on stage. So I, I played daddy pig and, and he always says on the show, goodness me, and when I literally got into this suit with all its contraptions, goodness me, was the understatement. Like I had to learn a, a lever and pulley system with one hand and then with the other hand, like you're riding a bike. I had a, a, a kind of a, a pedal, if you will, a, a bike brake, if you will, that would move the eyes and mouth. So it was like puppeteering and animatronics combined with, uh, with dance and choreography and movement. And as we know from Holy Moly, I'm a not a, I'm not a coordinated fella. Like, uh, the, the, this is, I, I'm like, I'm going to, this is it. I'm out day one. I'm going to come in. They're going to see that I can't handle the suit yeah. and, and can't handle the choreography. But as we always say, you got to do it for the kids. And I don't have kids yet, but I got, you know, I got cousins, nieces, nephews, uh, uncle Evan. Yeah. I got to do it for the kids. So I, 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 I picked up, you don't man up, you pick up. And, and I learned it and rocked it for two and a half years in 47 states six Canadian provinces, 196 cities. We sold out shows that, that in a million years, like I, I'm in the same conversation as Willie Nelson. We, we drew more than Willie did at the Grand Ole Opry house. What in tarnation Genius. is going on here with this Peppa Pig gig? Really insane. Yeah, the gravity of the show is huge. And and I want to talk about that idea about doing it for the kids. It's funny. They're, they're, the audience of kids is quite nothing like it. I've got a, a minor experience just from being like a camp counselor and a golf instructor to kids. And, sure. and the pop you can get from a group of kids that are interested and entertained and genuinely excited for something might be second to none. I'm curious what that's like from your perspective on on stage when you have a venue full of kids and families like on their feet screaming for you. Yeah, it's uh, it's surreal. It's it's probably a, a, a high that uh, that, you know, nothing can ever give outside of being in that moment, because there's one thing to be in a like a, an awesome concert with, with people your age or or, you know, old timers all rocking out. It's one thing to right. be on stage as a musician and to feel that energy. But there's a natural energy that we all remember when we were kids. That is that is just pure joy. And it doesn't even need to be justified. It's, it's unjustifiable joy and it's nonstop. They don't stop. So imagine a mosh pit, but every row is a mosh pit and the rows just keep going back and back. And sometimes they're in the balcony. And I can only imagine what these poor parents must be thinking. Thank goodness some of these venues, you know, served them wine because these kids are losing <laughs> yes. it. They're going bananas. We get charged 
once and all these kids attacked. I use attack, but because they were just excited, came up to Daddy Pig and I'm in this huge suit. And I'm like, if I fall over, this is not going to look good. This is this is going to be an international incident if I if I land on these kids. Wow. So, <laughs> some, some true rock star problems there, it sounds like. True rock star <laughs> problems. So that like instantaneous awesomeness was also finely balanced by fear every time I was on stage. So you'd have these wonderful highs and lows of, wow, this is the greatest moment of my life combined with my life is about to end. And, and to go that quickly on a spectrum I don't think any gig that I'll ever have from here on out or any experience will will be like that. But uh, it was worth it. I mean, just just to, if you if you ever you know watch a kid open up the present on Christmas morning or, or get the toy or get the award to see that every night for two and a half years outside of a couple of off times uh, that that is going to be hard to ever replicate again. I'm so grateful uh, that I got to do it. That's so neat for all the families and Peppa Pig fans out there listening. Very neat perspective for, from behind the costume. Uh, again, Evan Michael joining us. Uh, zero zero Evan Michael on Instagram. Be sure to check out all the content and things he's working on as well, too. Uh, I got to touch on another commonality that you and I have. Uh, let's talk about where you're originally from, uh, where I am as well, too. I, I see you grew up in western Massachusetts, myself in the Metro, in the metro West area of Boston. Uh, for people who haven't been to, to that part of the state or really don't know much about Massachusetts outside of Boston, educating everyone on the beauty because it's a wonderful part of the country. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, as we joke, uh, when people say, you know, where are you from? And, and I say the Berkshires and they go, ah, west of Worcester. And I say, yeah, way west of Worcester. We're yes, so far west go. of Worcester that we're almost in New York state. So a beautiful country out there. You know, the you got you got the mountains, you got the foliage, you, you, you've got so much history uh, uh, the, the hallmarks, of course, are Tanglewood, uh, where the Boston Pops are, and you've got the Norman Rockwell Museum, Herman Melville Museum, Mass Mocha's out there, uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art. It's just a thriving arts community. Probably why I ended up in the arts, because I grew up there. I was just surrounded by it. Mm -hmm. In fact, when we went back and performed Peppa Pig, here's a, here's a great crossover story. We performed uh, in, in Western Mass. But then we also performed in Boston. And I think a couple of the athletes' kids, based on the social media posts I saw, were not only at the concert, but I think I took pictures with them because I, I remember seeing, like, wait, is that, is that the wife of a Red Sox pitcher? Is that a, is that I the bet. mom of a Bruins player? I, oh my goodness, this is so cool. That Joe Haggerty, I got his kids' tickets. To, to go see Peppa Pig, I had to oink my way around Boston. Goodness me, I love the Bruins, Red Sox. Ooh, ooh, I just wish they would add more depth on both blue line and the bench. <laughs> Oh my God, that's so great, and 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 that's coming from the heart too. Because thankfully, the the Western Massachusetts uh, upraising, New York didn't grab you from a sports fan perspective. You and I are on an island because I live in Texas, you're out in California, but you rep Boston sports heavy, and that shows through on the Instagram. I'm I curious, do. everyone's kind of got their ranking of Boston sports teams and who they like the most. Yeah. How, how do you rank them in terms of fandom for yourself? Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, probably. Since uh, I didn't get to really pursue that hockey career, I had to make a decision early on. Well, I didn't make the decision. My dad made it for me. He go, you're not playing both hockey and golf. All right, pick one or the other. I say golf because you can play golf the rest of your life. You're not going to get past juniors in hockey. So pick yeah. golf. I'm like, okay, dad, fine. So I just became such a fan of hockey since I couldn't play it anymore. So I would go Bruins, Red Sox, Pats, Celtics. But that's more like a 1A you know, one B, one C, one D. They're all still one in my book. There's not like a one, two, three, four, but that's kind of the order of my fandom. Bees, socks, pats, celts. Definitely. I love that. I'm definitely a Pat's first guy. I'll be heading to a Celtics game when I visit my family in a couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to that. I'm curious nice. how, how pissed is the rest of the NFL that we found ourselves Mac Jones, huh? Whoa, whoa. I, 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 there's, there's a part of me, maybe this is the masochistic Massachusetts man that, that, I so want to see Mac Jones go against Brady and I so want to see him get decimated. And I don't know if that'll ever happen, but that's, you know, I was devastated when Brady left and I was actually quite ticked off when Tampa won. 
I don't, I don't know. Maybe I should have been happy. I wasn't, <laughs> but I'm very excited about the, the Mac attack era. I love that. I love, I love the that. fact that we are within a span of a uh, COVID induced year, not only competitive again, but might win the division and might make a solid run in the playoffs. Yeah, you're speaking that language that we all do back in Boston. It's, you know, not even playoff time. And it's, yeah, we want Brady in the Super Bowl. You know, <laughs> we, know. we want him now, too. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's crazy to just project that far ahead. But that's like what I'm hoping and rooting for. Awesome. Good stuff. Hey, Evan, when I when I met you there, I got to ask and shout out our friend of the show, Desert Fox, who makes the phone caddy. I handed you one of their their lovely phone caddies, uh, which we use every round of the course. I want to just get your thoughts on that product quickly, because I know you're going to use it out on the course. Uh, but this could be a potentially a holiday gift idea, I think, for your network. They, they might take to it. The golfers they are. Oh, not only take to it. I have already got one for my dad to gift to him because, you know, at the end of the day, how absolutely ridiculous is it to be wondering where your phone is, banging around, jostling around on the golf cart? Sometimes, you know, they got those, the ones above your head and you forget you put it up there and then you get back to your car and you're like, what in tarnation? nation? What's going on? Uh, I love all the apps, right, that you got now that you can use uh, on your phone to you know, track your yardage, see, yeah. see the scope of the hole and to basically clip that baby right in the cart. Like it's a part of it. And just as you drive and then as you play, just have it right there. So you can use your apps and have it be convenient, have it be at eye level and eyesight. Then you don't have to touch it or worry about it. Like, come on, that that's game changer. Yeah. That phone spot in the top of the golf cart. And I know what you're thinking of. That is just an absolutely preposterous spot. I can't believe that golf carts ever designed that, but right. fortunately we got the phone caddy to take care of uh, that problem. Hey, Evan, let's wrap our interview with our favorite question. We love to ask our guests here on the course of life. It's the 19th hole question. Ooh. You and I spent some time in the 19th hole recently, but I got to know what is your go-to meal and drink order of choice when you get in after a long day on the course? Great question. So if I play a morning round and I get done, I want the angry Arnie or the John Daly as soon as I get done. But if I play like a late afternoon round and I get done before sunset, I want a nice glass of red wine. And if I'm doing the John Daly, I pair it with the club sandwich. I think that's just a wonderful classic combo at the club, the Daly and the angry Arnie with the club sandwich. And then if it's late at night, I will go with the glass of wine. And depending on what they got on the menu, I'm either going to filet or I'm going chicken parm. Love that. Good variety. And the first time I've gotten multiple answers based on the time of finish, too. Oh, this is exquisite answer there. Alex, it's not just the course of life for the golf course. It's the course of life for my dining course as well. These are big decisions. They can't be made lightly and they must be made in relation to the day. I like to take advantage of it. Evan, we'll get you on our food pa- podcast next time around and we'll go down a whole other avenue there. But it was great having you here on Course of Life. Again, looking forward to following all your content. Zero Zero Evan Michael on Instagram. Thank you for being on and, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, my friend. Had an ace of a time. And we're back. Great chat there with Evan. That is just a fascinating look into what it's like to be on stage during those live kid shows. I mean, yeah, that I know is you, incredible. You do, you, you've got a lot of that production experience and like kind of yeah. what goes into that from the performer standpoint, being on stage, like doing the puppeteering, being in the suit, having the screen inside the suit that looks out to the crowd as you're reciting uh, lines a lot going on there. Not not your average acting gig, mm-hmm. I would say, being on tour nope. for two years with something like that. Two years. That's just crazy. Yeah. That's quite that's the tour. Yeah. Really like is. you said, not not the most illustrious tour. And you're like, oh, you were on tour with what band? Well, let me let me get into the story. That was really cool to have Evan recount all that. Definitely looking forward to catching up with him again. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll hit the links uh, sometime when we visit uh, LA or maybe when he comes out to Austin as well, too. So good having Evan on the show. And if you like that interview, plus everything else we do here on this podcast, leave us a rating. Uh, five stars is ideal. But if you think we're only worthy of four, that's OK. If you think three, if we think we're only average, then OK, I'm OK with that. If you want I'll to put two more ratings at this point, I don't if, even care. If, only stars yeah, I mean, if yeah. just give me give me a star. I just want a star. 
I just like when I'm playing Mario Party, all I want is a star. That's You're all like I that want. Kid, that second grade kid in the class, you know, just trying to be a goody two shoes. I just want a star teacher. Listen, That's we're all. millennials. We just need constant <laughs> affirmation that we're doing the right thing. <laughs> right. Very well put. Very well put. Like, <laughs> um, let's uh, let's go ahead and talk about some college football. It's my favorite time of year. It's silly bowl game season. We're going to get the Bahama Bowl, the MTSU Toledo Bowl. No, sorry, that's who's playing. Let me say that whole thing again. <laughs> Yeah, the Bahamas Bowl featuring uh, Middle Tennessee State and Toledo. Re- and really what yeah. I note about this silly bowl game is this is always the best ticket for like a six and six college football team because you get to play one of the first bowl games. You still get to spend the holidays with your family and you get a trip to paradise. So like these two schools hit the lottery. So I'm just shouting out Middle Tennessee State and Toledo. I think if you're going to have like a dismally average college football season, you want it to end at the Bahamas Bowl. That, that That's like pretty much the, the best way you can possibly end an average year. I don't know. I, I feel like I'd rather be at the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the other one that had to go mentioned as well. It's uh, Utah State and Oregon State. So, Mike, it's the, it is the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl. It's on ABC. I think there's some brand synergy going on here. I believe it's at the Rose Bowl. It makes a lot of sense from that standpoint. But when did celebrities start getting their own bowl games, Mike? Is this a, um, a harbinger of something in I mean, the future here? Are we going to see this a lot more? Or is this a trendsetter or is this a one and done? And the next thing you know, we're going to get the uh, the Tom Holland and Zidane, um Spider-Man <laughs> movie bowl or the the uh, the Samuel L. Jackson. I'm sick yep. and tired of these snakes on a plane bowl. You know, I yes. don't know. It's, You're thinking, it's, yeah, a lot of movies. Definitely. Mar- yeah, there um, will be a Marvel movie that eats this theme up. There'll I'm be surprised a there actually theme. isn't a Marvel bowl yet. I mean, there should be very Captain soon. Captain America bowl. Comic Con um, bowl could be coming very soon. Oh boy. <laughs> There's a lot of possibilities there. So yes, yeah, so the age of the celebrity sponsored bowl game has officially begun. But yes, absolutely a million college football games heading your way starting this Friday. I'm at Course of Life One on Twitter. If you are crazy enough like me to bet every single one, guess who's nuts? This guy. Right here. You want to join the party? Follow at Twitter, uh, Course of Life One for all the picks. You know what? I think that we also need to do the Lisa Simpson method for all these bets. So, which team would win based on a mascot fight between the two of them? If you put the, yes, that's right. The two, I that. there, yeah, that's that's what I want. So it's off the top of my head. We got Beavers against Aggies, Utah State. I don't really know what an Aggie is. So I'm gonna take the Beavers. I'm, yeah, I'm a million feel, Beavers I against feel any human like an being. Aggie's right? got to be a cow of some kind, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll take the Beavers in a long term fight. They'll they'll just they'll take I mean, you to death. You know, there's only one other creature that destroys their environment as much as humans, and that's Beavers. So all right, wow. So I so I love Oregon State <laughs> and the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. That's my go. deductive reasoning right there. So follow right. on Twitter for for the rest of those picks all bowl season. Let's hashtag always end with food. Yes. Brought to you by Tosi Snacks, makers of the Tosi Bites. Head to Tosi.com backslash COL, promo code COL20 for 20% off your Tosi Bites today. Uh, it's holiday season. I'm heading back to visit the family. Uh, first Christmas there in three mm. years since I've been up to Boston, New England area. So definitely food plans uh, surrounding Italian and seafood in the Boston area. And like I would mentioned in past weeks, I am going to get back down to our alma mater, Mike, Quinnipiac yep. University. It's been over a decade, far too long, but I'm going to get myself and my wife to Connecticut. And I think we're going to do a little, little bit of a roaming food tour as I uh, touch base with my, our, our call years of the past yeah you know i don't think uh eating your way through hamden connecticut and new haven connecticut is something a lot of people do <clears throat> but there's I'm glad no guidebook to see, written like, about that specifically no but you could do that you could write a guidebook on that the hashtag always end with food guidebook to hamden and new haven connecticut uh eateries i mean that could <laughs> be that. kind of interesting uh, so thing. it's ray and mike's deli we already discussed that a few weeks ago yep. that's our go-to like breakfast sandwich spot right down the street and then i think i'm gonna go new haven to uh, un- uh, unofficial maybe like pizza cow of the United States. I feel like yep. since you and I were in college 10, 15 years ago, the New Haven, New Haven pizza buzz has like really hit a feverish pitch in the last decade. The, the hype is real down there. So I'm, I'm definitely going to try I mean, you got to go there. to Pepe's. You got to go to Pepe's. You so. nothing we'll else. You go to Pepe's. And then uh, the, the, the Michael Russell pre-show suggestion, Louis Lunch. Mm. 
Yep. Like, tell tell everyone about Louis lunch so people don't understand what's going on at Louis lunch. It's what, what the home mean? of the hamburger. They make their hamburgers on this like weird vertical toaster thing. So the, the burger is actually vertical and gets heated from both sides like it's getting broiled or something. And then uh, it's served on white bread t- toast uh, with like a slice of onion. I think it's raw. And um and that's it. No ketchup. Don't ask for ketchup. From what I understand, don't you do it. So this, this sounds like like the soup Nazi of burgers, basically. Uh, I, I'd, I'd be scared I mean, to even walk yeah. in there and hand the money to the guy correctly. Yeah. Listen, if if you really need to put it over on him, then you better buy his old armoire and hope the recipes are in there. So well placed reference. <laughs> nice tease for what's coming next week. We'll get to that in a moment. But what, what was in your food plans this past week? Uh, so this was cookie swap week. So we did a cookie swap with some friends. So we had uh, sugar cookie nice. sandwiches. We had triple chocolate cookies. We had pizzelli, uh, those little Italian uh, waffle cookies. You know? Oh, yes. Had yeah. a million. Yeah. Never knew the name mm-hmm. until this moment. Yeah. Love it. Okay. There were uh, snickerdoodles. There were Buckeyes involved. It was a great it was a great collection of uh, of cookies there. Everything was fantastic. decent. Decent haul for you guys at the end of the night there. Yeah, I think so. Um, most of it is gone right now. Mostly what we have left is is Pizzelli's, which uh, last night we did some uh, frosted cinnamon honey on them, which was fantastic. Ooh. I might do that again tonight or Nutella. I'm not sure. One or the other. Or I think yeah. I still have some frosted chocolate honey as well, actually. So that might be really good. Wow. Great cookie spread options there. Yeah. Love it. Good yeah. stuff. Nice. Yeah. All right. That was hashtag always in with food. Like I said, we're full on into the holiday season, but that does not mean that the content stops. No, the episodes, they keep on going every week right into the new year. Uh, so next couple apps, little content plug upcoming. Get tuned in. Get ready. Next week, it's coming. It is the annual, the fourth annual. Would you believe mm-hmm. it, Mike? The fourth annual airing of grievances for a long time. and the Festivus episode. Always a great one. I'm, I'm I got a lot of problems with you people. Got a lot Listen, of problems. There was a lot to have problems with this year. Uh, there, there was. was a lot. I've started taking a couple notes <laughs> of oh, things that upset me, and it could be a little bit of a longer episode this year. So, so tune in for that. And then before we do get into the new year, we will have a holiday week episode in between Christmas and New Year's where we recap everything that went on in the world of golf in 2021, our favorite stories, and what we'll look forward to next year as well. So there's a lot of comment, uh, content coming this holiday season. But first and foremost, we thank you for tuning in this week, and we'll see you all next week. Thank you.